to another episode of the Freeman Perspective. I hope this one's going to be a visually stimulating show for you tonight. And uh, if you actually have a pair of 3D goggles and glasses sitting around the house, you might want to put them on. This is going to be fun. My little tribute to South by Southwest. Whew, I've been running. Yeah, getting this show together. Well, it turns out that my guest has not phoned. We have a... Uh, Kent Brentowski scheduled for tonight and uh, haven't got to hear from him yet so we'll see if he calls in if not I have some other special guests for you uh, and we'll get to all that all right I'm trying well all right well here we go Tonight was going to be all about a self-initiated magic, good versus bad magic. And I'll get Kent back. I don't know what happened to him this first time I've had uh, them phone me. So maybe we could take some phone calls tonight if we uh, end up getting bored enough. So on my mind, I've been thinking a lot about what's going on. And uh, I just saw old Milosevic died in his cell interesting that there's another suicide around the Clinton family. I don't know if many of you know this or not, but uh, there are a great many suicides around the Clinton family. Uh, Bill Clinton actually passed a law in Arkansas saying that uh, any death found to be a suicide would no longer be investigated. No further investigation would be required. Then there were over a hundred suicides around the Clinton family. So either they're very depressing people or uh, there's something fishy going on here. And here's Milosevic getting ready to get Clinton into the tribunal. And lo and behold, he dies. Uh, quite possibly murder. That's still yet to be seen, but... Boy, it would surprise me a bit with this group. Well, I'm caught a little off guard here, folks, because uh, I don't know what to do about our, our guest lecturer tonight. Keep getting this thing uh, flashing, but I have a feeling something's gonna not work out with that. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we'll take some calls. Uh, even though that's not <laughs> working right now either. Yeah, I'm lost, guys. I'm lost. Yeah, call in. Uh, I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about what might occur here which I'm pretty certain will occur, and that is the chemtrail activity for South by Southwest. I want you all watching. You know, notice these things. Notice what's going on in your skies. So if, uh, you'll notice that right tonight, go out and look at this full moon in Virgo. We got the full moon that just had a lunar eclipse. Of course, we didn't get to see that in America, but if you go look at the moon right now, you're going to see two big old chemtrails floating along beside it. Now, these are not natural occurrences. They're not contrails. They're not anything that uh, anyone's willing to admit to. So uh, most likely are not there for our benefit. Hmm? The symptoms of chemtrails will be lethargy. You get very tired. Now, when I was in Tucson for the Gem and Mineral show, we had heavy, heavy chemtrail activity and a number of people getting sick. A lot of people thought they had the flu and, and the ingredients in chemtrails very much so will give you flu-like symptoms. So uh, the symptoms become, you get very tired. Now I went through it too, I was in Tucson, I, I was sick from it also. And you get very tired, then your joints start to ache, right? You're, shoulders and your lower back will start to ache and then you'll start to feel a little nausea and mostly if you're active if you're doing something and uh, then you'll be sitting there with a fever for the rest of the night and the symptoms will probably pass by the next day there was absolutely a huge chemtrail presence there in Tucson and I noticed that these chemtrail activities happen because of people Right? They are targeting people with these chemtrails. So when there's a large activity that brings people from all over the world, like the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, like South by Southwest, 
they're going to spray the heck out of us. Okay? So when you're going to South by Southwest, take the time and look up in the sky. Notice the grid patterns. Notice that what will occur will be light on Wednesday, light on Thursday. But by Friday, it's going to be heavy, super heavy. Because the more people, the more chemtrails. Coincidence? I don't know. But the, uh, you're going to notice that these chemtrails will bring the temperature down. So by nighttime on Saturday, it should be, or Friday, most likely Friday, it'll be super cold. The, the temps will drop. And it's due to these chemtrails. I've been watching them for years now, and I've watched the effects. Because the following day, and that'll most likely be Saturday, we're going to have super radiant sun. This is something that I've noticed continually with the chemtrails. They uh, seem to, when they dissipate, now you can watch them, okay? I, I, even tonight, I, I saw four chemtrails being formed, and then I saw two other jets flying through them without chemtrails. So I'm trying to show you that this is not a natural occurrence. You know, if you go up there and watch, I live near the airport, so I can see it a lot, that some jets leave the trails, some don't. Uh, now this, this mixture, which we have found to be barium, aluminum, there's even pathogens like anthrax and, and flu viruses in the chemtrails, which no one can really explain what that's about other than thinking they're trying to kill us off. These uh, chemtrails will spread. You can watch them as they spread across the sky. And then as it becomes a thin layer, I'm not sure what causes this effect, but the sun becomes super radiant. Like, so bright and so hot, it's almost as if it had cleared away the ionosphere, the ozone layer. So keep an eye out now on South by Southwest, see if I'm wrong. See if it's already begun tonight, and tomorrow it'll be heavier. By Friday, it's going to be super heavy. And you're going to see these chemtrails, and you're going to wonder what they are, and you're going to feel the symptoms. So be careful. And I'm looking for a cure. I've got a few things on my website where you can actually take some... Uh, I'm taking selenium right now because it, it pulls out the heavy metals. And a lot of the problem is people think that they're dealing with a, uh, a virus because the symptoms uh, feel like a sickness. But the truth is it's heavy metal poisoning. And so I've got some healers working on that. And I personally carry around my own Organite, which uh, Jeff here at ACTV, he, he's been known to make Organite. I think his site's like Orgone Wizard. And I've got a couple of Organite links on my site. This is a Reiki and technology that's used to repel negative orgone and has been shown to clear or dissipate chemtrails. It's an amazing thing. Well, I see this thing flashing and honestly I don't know if I can even hear phone calls or not because things blew up in here yesterday and I think this is why we're having so many problems. Uh, they had to rewire the whole thing and I think a few things got left out. So if... Uh, if I can't get through here, I've got James waiting in the in the back room there to come and talk to us about voter rescue. Uh, you find any shaggy anything there with the phones? Any luck? I don't know. It looks like you all are calling in, but I can't hear you, so. Oh, uh, if you're using the screen and you can use the phone. Uh, right. Try the floor and the, you know, the floor button and the other button there? They're, they're right next to each other. Uh, well, everything got changed. Nothing has titles on it. We've got all, all new equipment in there and nothing is labeled. Uh, I don't know, Shag. Sorry. I mean, this isn't really our fault. Um, so, you know, here we are. we got an hour. got some time to talk to y'all. and can't talk to That's, that's, that's a good sign. Hey there. All right, well, hold on a sec, Shag, because now I got some, 
sound going in here. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, it just so happens it's pretty crazy, but uh, I was on my way home today, probably about 15 minutes ago, right before I was watching the show, and I saw some uh, some trails right next to the moon because I was noticing the full moon. Uh huh. And there was some Kim trails, and my friend was just jokingly saying something about them. And then we come flip on the TV, and you just go off on them, man. <laughs> that's that's some crazy. That's some crazy stuff. I didn't it, know all this. When we put it together. I mean, it makes sense. It really is. You know, the official story, well, the unofficial official story, right, <clears throat> is that these chemtrails are up there as a, a biological chemical warfare shield. So what they can do is actually shoot lasers up into the, uh, the grid pattern and detect particles per million coming into the atmosphere in case somebody wanted to dump something on us. But of course, that's not what the uh, ingredients show. You know, why would there be anthrax viruses in there, uh, illnesses in there? Uh, have, you, have you felt, well, you wouldn't know yet, uh, the symptoms? Well, I mean, the past, I, I mean, me personally, I always see them. I always see them, I guess we're over like some kind of line or something, of the mil I don't know, I just always see chemtrails above my house. And uh, I don't know, I've been, lately I've been, I don't know, flu like flu type symptoms I guess. I don't yeah, know. upper respiratory infection. Yeah, I mean so stuff like that. Just, I mean sinus medicine and allergy medicine didn't do anything for me. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're dealing with a, with a heavy metal and then also the, the stuff that they use to uh, keep the trails together is uh, a polymer fiber and this is all going right into our lungs, you know. People yeah. in higher altitudes find this stuff actually laying on their cars, and that's how people have tested the substances coming down, because it actually was hitting the ground when they first started this, and people were finding the actual spiderweb type substance in their front yard, and they'd pick it up and immediately get the flu, or at least they thought they were. And next thing you knew, the news was reporting a flu-like epidemic, and they actually reported that there is no virus, but everyone has flu-like symptoms. So they just called it a flu-like symptom epidemic. It's yeah, crazy. That's, that's crazy, man. I didn't, I didn't really piece that together. Yeah. Well, um, watch watch you... this weekend. I mean, I guarantee it. It's going to be so heavy for South by Southwest because they're absolutely targeting humans. Yeah. I mean, why, why do you think they would do this? Is population uh, control or what, what's the deal? Yeah, my, my hypothesis on the whole thing is not a bright and shiny one for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally believe that they are setting up Armageddon and through all the different technologies with HARP and the chip and chemtrails, the things that we're breathing, even the stuff that they're putting in our food and water. Uh, <laughs> Patriot Act. They're going to be able to, you know, create plagues and, and famines, you know, with gen genetically modified foods. So it's going to appear like it's, it's Armageddon. And then I, so yeah, I think that with HARP, like we breathe in all these uh, dormant viruses and then HARP has the ability, and I've done a lot of research on HARP, I got a video on it, uh, that it can actually activate these dormant viruses. So they can all sit there in our body for as long as they need to, and then they can turn them on like that with this frequency modulator. It's the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program. Uh, you know, go to my website and check it out. I got a lot of info on there, a lot of links. Uh, you know, it just, seems, it just seems like, why wouldn't they just, instead of going through all this craziness, just drop the plague up on us or something, you know? Dude, they, they need school. good servants, you know, it's, it's conditioning, it's uh, psychological warfare. So, you know, if... You think Bush is behind this? Well, no. <laughs> if he had a brain cell, I would maybe think he was a, a threat, but no, he's the front man. He was chosen to be a tyrant. Uh, there again, uh, psychological operations. If you watch, uh, Bill Clinton was railroaded into office too, whether anybody believes that or not. And it, it, the motto in Arkansas was elect Clinton, get him out of Arkansas, because he was once again, like I was saying earlier, connected with all these suicides. Everybody knew he's a coke snorting womanizer, so they put him in office to defile the idea of the president, the very ideal of our, you know, it's not the one you see on TV. 
And they would have never brought up the cigar in front of any other president. Uh, they, they did that on purpose to, to really bring down any of our, this is for our benefit, right? This is why he's now getting paid off. This is why you see him hanging out with George Sr. Because he's getting paid off for taking the fall. His whole goal, his whole purpose of being in office was to defile our ideal of the president. And then W gets railroaded into office so that we lose all faith in our government and all faith in the system that's running it and so that a tyrant could be in charge. Because what we're looking at is a globalist scheme and in a globalist environment you can't have a shining beacon of freedom like America. So you have to turn America into a perverted, tyrannical beast so that when the global government's in place, you can go, well, look what, uh, look what freedom gave America. They became a bunch of perverted tyrants. And tyrants, W's job. And that's why all that's going on there. Well, thank you very much for your call. Hey, uh, one more thing, man. Yeah. Do you think... Uh what do you think about like Alex Jones and all his craziness? Are I love you Alex, his... man. You know, I'm supposed to be speaking with Alex on Thursday at Cafe Monday. Um, Alex, Alex does a fantastic job. He he works way harder than I ever think about doing yeah, he's, he's, it. He's, you know, like I like to read cool. a lot. I like to study this stuff. But I mean, he's right on. I think you know, my only uh, criticism would be that he kind of has a fear-based program that, you know, it's like, big brother's coming to get you. Well, yeah, yeah you know, what do you do now? And I so... I think he's a, little, he's a little out there. He's a little... I mean, most of the opinions he tries to express are valid, but it's just the way he goes about ex expressing them, like, angrily, and just... I don't know. He's right. just, he goes He goes about things wrong, I think. But I guess that's why he, he is who he is. Yeah, you know, he's popular, and, and that is what makes him who he is. And, you know, God love him, he, he, he's out there. I mean, he's a bulldog. But, yeah, I'm trying to hopefully spread a similar message. But, of course, I'm looking at this occultically. I'm, I'm into, like, understanding why they're doing such things on particular dates and why yeah. they worship this goddess Columbia and, and things of that note, uh, as opposed to Big Brother. You know, Big Brother's kind of a side note to the whole thing. Uh, really, to me, this all boils down to a bunch of occultists, and therefore, what are they up to? Why would yeah. these? Uh, why do they perform these rituals? You know, what is the outcome? What's the goal? Talking about Bohemian Grove. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Bohemian Grove. You know, they worship the owl, right? Yeah. Well, you look downtown at the Frost Bank, and it's an owl. Right? Yeah. So, and that owl is surrounded by pentagrams, so... You know, George, George Bush doesn't really live here anymore. He lives in, like, what, D.C. now? Why would he put the owl here? Why wouldn't he put it in D.C.? Oh, it has nothing to do with Bush. You know, he's, he's nothing. Uh, I mean, he's, you, you know, he's, he's, leader, he's what he is, but... Uh, this is actually, you'll find that the cities are set up in such a way that they have their own occultic powers. And it's actually uh, geomancy uh, going on. Hey, do you think uh, Schwarzenegger is behind all this, or what? What's the <laughs> no, pretty much. If you find people in the front, then they're not the ones in charge. Uh, well, hey, I'm gonna take a couple more calls. So thanks, man. That's. Uh... Are you there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, this is Steve on sixth. I'm sorry. Steve on sixth. Oh, hey, Steve. What's up? Good week to come down. Uh, I was noticing the chemtrails today too, but. Um, I'm glad so many people are noticing, you know. Well, it's been going on, I've been noticing, since the year 2000. And I, I want to say also I support Alex 100%. And yeah. He's a very brave person. He's done a lot of brave things that most people wouldn't even consider. Right. But I had, uh, do you want to discuss something real quick? Uh, sure. I had an interesting talk with a rabbi hmm. from the reform side of Judaism. And I wanted to ask him about the Talmud. And he had an interesting comment on that, and because it's in, it seems according to Christian and Tex Mars and things that it's very antichrist, okay? Right. And what he said was the when Moses uh, when they got the Old Testament, they also got a oral interpretation of it, a written and an oral, and it's the oral. It's as if the Constitution is like the Old Testament, yet they've written statutes and codes and things to subvert it to do what they want to do. 
and that's what the Talmud is. It's man's interpretation of the written law, which, you know, man's going to start interpreting it, interpreting it to mean whatever he wants. I didn't tell him that, but that's what he told me. It's right. very interesting to see, you know, speaking of, you know, because we've been studying a lot about the words of Jesus and how it conflicts with some of these ideas. So you and I always have long conversations. That's what we can talk about next time you come downtown. Awesome. All right. So uh, uh, we'll look for you, and I'll watch the rest of your show. All right. I'll be, I'll be sitting out in front of South by Southwest this weekend for sure. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. Oh, I think I just hung up on you. <laughs> you waited all that time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you got phone lines busy, man. Yeah, we were going to talk a little bit about the uh, solar deities. Hey, are you there? Hello. 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 Are, are you on the air? Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, doing some research on the internet. And uh, I saw a couple of dates pop up recently that are dates to watch as far as uh, March 22nd, uh -huh. and 322, and uh, June 6th. Right, 666. I was curious to know if you had any other numbers or any other dates that would be potential to watch. And then I'll, I can't hear you over my phone, so I'm just going to turn. Okay, yeah, things, things aren't working quite right here. Um, yeah, the. That was a very interesting, and I, I've wondered a lot about this. Now, honestly, you know, I, I registered 911 simply because of its constant usage. Um, the 322 absolutely is, is one of their main numbers, and it's been a thousand years since we've had 666, right? Um, I, I had my eye on March 20th just to, uh, because of the whole Iran Euro for oil deal coming up that date. Um, that should be an interesting day, and it, it would be interesting if uh, there was something that occurred on 322, you know, following right after that, or, yeah, you know, I wish I had their calendar. I've looked for it for, for you know, I was going to say centuries, uh, I've been looking for it for, for, you know, as long as I've been studying the Masons, they have the Anno Lucius calendar, and if you go down to the courthouse downtown, you'll see that the courthouse is dated to uh, 5,940 something uh, AL, the Anno Lucius calendar, the Age of Light, the Lightbringer, Lucifer. That's what this is all about. But what does that mean? I don't know. I'm still working on that one. Uh, so it's the year 6,005 right now to those in the know. What does that mean? What is it? You know, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I have not found the Anno Lucius calendar. So if you guys want to help out and try and find the Anno Lucius calendar, email it to me at blueflyfree at gmail or go to my website, thefreemanperspective.blogspot.com, and uh, let's try and get into this. You know, it's a fun adventure that I'm on here, and I want everybody to join along because it's way intriguing. You know, I got here with me the complete system of magic of the Golden Dawn. This is uh, one of the magical schools. I brought this along because I was going to have a magician on to kind of counter the Christian perspective or to, you know, throw in, you know, just to have all angles of things. But here we have an, uh, a self-initiation into the Golden Dawn, into the realms of magic, and uh, this sort of stuff's going on all over the place. I'm always amazed to see that uh, I'll sit at a coffee shop and there's some kids sitting around talking about the Sephirah and the geomantic expressions in a cube. And, uh, you know, they're just uh, kids on the street, don't have a job hanging out, just doing uh, their uh, occultism, checking it out. There's a lot of you out there. All right. Hello. Hello. Oh. I'll figure it. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, what about the chemtrails? Are you allowed to go to outside, or can you? does it affect you right away? Uh, yeah, it, it takes a build-up, for sure. Um, you know, it took about a week in Tucson before I started to feel sick, and it was so constant. Um, 
Are you going to go to watching the music and nothing? Yeah, I'm going to go out. You know, what can you do? You know, it's going on. It's going on all around. It's happening day and night. It's hitting us while we're asleep, awake, whatever. Yeah. So I thought about, you know, wearing a gas mask just to make a point. Yeah, <laughs> but it's dangerous, you know. And are you? do you do, like, prescription drugs? No, no, I no. really... Yeah, my, because I'm coming to see a band called Rocco Toluca and the Birding, and they're playing here in Austin. Uh-huh. Amazing band. You should go to watching them. I right know. Where are they playing? Um, it's called Moomoos. Moomoos. All right. You know what that is? Uh, no. Okay, because I'm really worried about the chemical things, but I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, I, I want to get to the bottom of this thing. I, I really want to find the jets, find the, the dispersal methods. There are so many people involved. I mean, you go onto the web and just type in chemtrails and, you know, it's going to list you 10,000 pages. Uh, so many of us looking at this thing, but yet we can't come up with answers from any sort of official response. Do you think the government is releasing the chemicals in the air to mess up us in, in nothing? I, yeah. I, I mean, I personally think it's NATO. Uh, you know, it's the first foreign force to ever fly in American skies. Yeah, well, I'm glad you that you identified it because I was always wondering what those things were flying to around the air. Yeah, and yeah it's visible. Uh, it's visible too. You yeah, know, well, absolutely. Yeah, I man. But people, you know, they don't they don't think about it, and nobody expects their government to be out to get them. They might tell us when it's too late too, and you know, why wait until the last minute? Get a hold of it right now. Yeah. Yeah, and so many people are trying, but uh, for it's an amazing thing how I mean this is this is information that's more blocked than UFOs, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm finding more and more researchers looking into it, and no one coming up with any sort of official answer. Certainly, there's a patent with NASA for weather modification, and they just passed the weather modification bill, so uh, there is you know documentation of chemtrails of what you know that's the right uh i'm not pronouncing the chemtrails that's the the scientific name for that or do you know that's up? the name that just kind of got placed on them yeah smooth that'd be a good name for a band yeah it would <laughs> chemtrail you know hey man thanks for talking with you and enjoy the festival and i'm talking with you later all right namaste okay I will, adios adios hey right. you know i try are you there Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that there uh, is a big demonstration that has been organized uh, against uh, chemtrails. Really? And they're going to march on uh, uh, Senator Barbara Boxer's office in Los Angeles on the 23rd of March. I believe that's a week from tomorrow. Huh. And they're in inviting people from all over the country. And so far, it looks like they're going to have a pretty good turnout. And this is going to be the first major demonstration that I know of uh, all about chemtrails. Wow. So I just thought I'd put the word out, so tell anybody you know. In fact, uh, I'll, uh, I'll send you an email and shoot you to a connection to it so you can pass it on to anybody uh, yeah, that you know about. It. But it's, it's very well organized. They've got their permits, believe it or not. Yeah. And uh, there's, they're not going to shut them down. It's going to they're going to be... No telling how many people there are filming, you know, videotaping the thing. Yeah, I so, wish I could be there. So hopefully this will start to arouse some uh, some pretty good attention uh, to the to the subject matter. But anyway, enjoy good. your show. Appreciate so what you're doing. I'll, I'll get that to you a little later this evening. Okay. Have a good one. Wow, wow. So it's it's really going on, folks. I mean, we've got activity. We're gonna get. We're you know, I, I'm gonna report to you any information that I can get on this. Uh, you can check out my DVD. Uh, you can get these from my website. Uh, I have the whole chemtrail video on there. has a lot of information in there. It's also got harp and corporate logos, Columbia, and of course Rainbow. Uh, all about synchronicity and the synchronistic things that are occurring right now as I decided to talk about chemtrails over anything else. And now we got plenty of response. And I, I love that because we need to find out, people. This is not something, I mean, personally, I guess I'm somewhat of a defeatist. I, I don't believe that we can do things to stop these guys until 
everyone realizes that there's uh, something going on here. And I'm not just talking about the chemtrails, I'm talking about these occultists and good versus bad magic and all of the things that are going on right now around us are, are truly bizarre. I mean, people haven't experienced such things yet. Uh, capitalism has come to the forefront of everything. It's, it's in our TVs, it's on our radios and our people. Uh, hippies are studying it in coffee shops, uh, books of it are bound. It's become the new religion and everybody's just trying to figure out what's going on with the, this whole magic. So, uh, <laughs> I just went off on a tangent there. Hello. Raymond. Yeah. What's going on, man? Hey, man. Hey, I'm glad, so glad you're talking about chemtrails. This should be the number one topic. It should be on the front page of the newspaper every day. I mean, it's so clear just look up. I mean, look up tonight. I was driving around like right before your show, just like you, you know, right over the moon, grids and three parallel lines laid right together. I mean, it's absurd. Right. Um, and I guess when people don't know, you know, when you don't know what it is, you don't... For me, it was kind of a, a, a shock because when I saw my first trail, I thought it was a rocket launch because... <laughs> You know, I grew up in Orlando, and that's what you saw right. were rocket launches and the, the big trail left behind the space shuttle or, you know, the Apollo. Well, there's so many whichever. people who have it confused with a, with a real contrail, and it's just so easy to, to see the difference, and you can observe both at the same time. Exactly. You can observe chemtrails and contrails at the same exact moment and even at the same altitude, which blows right. away their, their BS cover story about, you know, it has to be the right temperature on the right day. Right. Um, we're sunscreening. I think that's a bunch of BS. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, it happens at night. Uh, exactly. I have another yeah. great video uh, linked to my site also on that, and it, it has actual video footage of a jet emitting a contrail through the chemtrails. Yeah, I've actually seen it. All um, right, all right. I think what, we, what bothers me the most about it is it's, you can filter your water, you can buy organic food, you can do everything, but you cannot control this. Right. And you mentioned selenium. What else, what else have you discovered? Uh, selenium and organite, you know. <laughs> so that's all I've got so far. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, we got hit real bad out at the Rainbow Gathering, and I've still been suffering from that since the uh, 1996. Right. Well, I've had two URIs or flus or whatever in the last 90 days. Right. And, um, you know, that's something, that's something's up, that's for sure. Uh, isn't it amazing we that we can't about it. get to... I think to... the direction what? we need to head is um, to find out what's going to help yeah. clean our bodies of this. Yeah. Because we don't have any control over them spraying it, and it's not going to stop. Right. Well, so. it's reported that it, it will stop, but when it does... That's yeah. when we should start worrying. <laughs> well, I'm with you. I agree with that theory. I think that uh, they're weakening our immune systems right now. I know that's a lot of people don't want to deal with that. No. They don't want to think about that. I know. They, but that's... what else could it be, man? Right. I mean, we can't stick our heads in the sand because the sand's filled a barium, too. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right, right well, I'm going to let you uh, take some more calls. I just wanted to say, hey, yeah, good thanks. job, man. Thanks. Later. Later. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Fine. Um, I just turned in on to your show, Mr. Freeman, and um, I've always been wondering what, wondering what the chemtrails are about or why, why are they being done. I heard somebody say that they were used for... Uh, Weather modification, so people could see patterns in the sky from satellites. There's, and there's that. Uh, it's, it's generally not accepted that it's not that it's going to be used for weather modification. But you know how these guys are. They have, you know, th at least a threefold operation. It's never just one. So, uh, you know, the the common response from the military is that it's a a, a chemical biological warfare shield. So it can detect incoming particles through lasers, and then, uh, but then when you start to look at the ingredients, you recognize that it's a it's a really good population culling technology floating in our air, and uh, yeah, they could very well 
you know, we've reached the point where they're ready to hit the new world order, get the, the global government involved, and actually be ruling, uh, as they put it, through the divine power of Lucifer. Um, this is the Mason's own words, you know. World War III, I, I firmly believe, is, is right around the corner. But it's going to be a war unlike any other. It's because uh, they have the seeming power of God. Uh, if you want to know more about weather modification and, and ability to generate earthquakes and floods, uh, not to mention to steer hurricanes, uh, look into HARP. Uh, my <clears throat> Once again, if you go to my website, just search the Freeman Perspective and go to my website, and uh, I have a video there on HARP and all the links that you'll possibly need. But with HARP and with the chemtrails, they can absolutely manifest this false apocalypse. Uh, they can, and see, the chip is, is a prime factor in this whole thing because HARP is a, a frequency modulator, and of course, everything is frequency. And then the chemtrails are heavy metals which remain in our body and can be activated through HARP. The aluminum in the chemtrails makes us a fine antenna. And if we actually have a chip, then they can actually determine who is going to receive the illness frequencies. You see, it's amazing stuff. But all the science is there. You can Google uh, Freeman? Yeah, just uh, Google the Freeman perspective. Freeman perspective? Yeah. And what are some uh, tips for trying to keep yourself healthy well like i say i'm wearing my organite uh this is reiki and technology i know it seems odd and weird but it's a it's a polymer filled with uh or a resin uh filled with quartz crystals silver copper and then a coiled wire you can actually make large ones people are doing it all over austin there's a, they call them chem busters or cloud busters and i have a link to that on this site as well uh and this Oregon Reiki and technology is out there, which has been uh, suppressed heavily, just like the Tesla technology. They're both being used against us right at this time. Harp is Tesla, and this uh, chemtrail has to deal with Oregon. Uh, so these are new sciences that aren't really being uh, discussed in the open too much, except for by conspiracy theorists, right? Well, they haven't... Uh shut you all down yet so <laughs> right <laughs> that's a that's a good thing uh so i know your show please up the good work thank you hello 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 you're gonna be at my last call what's going on okay okay cool it's me okay so like my fear on the chemtrails is this it's kind of freaky and like I don't mean to like tweak with your paranoia or anything here, <laughs> but like okay, so like you know like uh, what LSD is? Yeah, I've heard of this stuff. Okay, okay, you know how much like LSD is actually in a hit of LSD, like a, a little very, vial. Very how many little. People? Very very little. Yes. And LSD was discovered like it was like late fifties by the Sandals Company. Like the actual chemical structure that makes LSD, it was like the late fifties they discovered it. It was a Sandoz company in Sweden. Wow. Now, if you could like tweak that molecule mm -hmm. or make a similar molecule and like put that in a a, a, a liquid uh -huh. like liquid LSD, and then make that into that liquid into a gas, right? You could put it into like say chemtrails and use it to. Like, not make people trip, but make people anti-trip. Like, not wake people up, but right. put them to sleep. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Because, like, such a small, small amount of LSD is actually necessary for somebody to trip. That if you had something similar, like, conceptually, you could use it not to wake people up, but to put people asleep. And I think that's what's actually going on. And the, the bronchial effects are just a side effect of the actual... Um, mind-altering substance that could possibly be in it. There's been a lot of talk of, uh, you know, and I, I think I've been hit with that a couple of times, come in here and been totally mind-wiped. Uh, and it was interesting because they were talking about it on GCN uh, that night. Um, well, I want to add to that, and then we'll have to close this up because i got another guest, uh, that HARP, 
once again, the high frequency active Aurora research program can actually tweak your brain uh, using a proper frequency and cause the effects of psychoactive drugs. Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on out there in, in the water and, and yada, yada, yada. And, and there's ways to fight it, of course. But, I mean, it was just like my own personal theory of, like, you could do that. Oh, yeah, I mean, totally, it is, it totally. is feasible. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And if people I mean, aren't paying attention, if they're not looking... Yeah, Shag says, what's up, babe? Hey, babe, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I'll let you guys get to, like, your real guess. You know, hey, that was no, no, that was one of my great. random Tim the Trail theories. Uh, All right, lots of drum. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, sorry I can't take any more. We've got, uh, uh, you want to send James on in? we got James coming on. Oh, I wanted to mention something uh, Why I brought the, the old bowl here, right? I picked this up in Tucson. I was, uh, well, I ran into a friend, uh, Kenny Parker, and uh, he, uh, he told me I should go check out the uh, Bodhisattva guys and, and check out the, he had a whole room full of these bowls, and it was just the coolest thing ever. And uh, so I ended up running into the Bodhisattva guys, and uh, they actually traded me this bowl, which is handcrafted by the Tibetan group in, uh, or the Nepalese in Nepal, by a group that's been doing it for centuries. And... Uh, they traded me for the DVD, so, you know, I thought, wow, they you know, got like, a good deal there. Right? Yeah, so did they. But, so it turns out that Kenny Parker is going to do a Tibetan Singing Bowl concert here in Austin. So I wanted to uh, show that, because um, that's going to be really cool. It's, uh, it's sound healing, and, you know, we're looking for answers for these chemtrails. We're looking for answers to the frequency modulators. And we're looking at harmonics, right? And the, so Kenny Parker, master sound healer, will be putting on a concert March 17th, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then there's going to be a seminar all day long on the 18th. So that's March 17th and 18th. It's up there on the screen. Give them a call. Check it out. This stuff is cool. If you hear it with all the different bowls, they're all set up to the phi ratio and... Yeah, maybe this will be an answer because really we're looking uh, now at things that are beyond what we consider third dimensional reality. And so we're dealing with harmonics with vibrations. So check out this concert and hey, you know, it might save your life. You never know. All right. Well, now let's uh, move on. James. Uh, yeah, let's pull up a chair. I think I will. We got the. Uh, like a bowl. Yeah, isn't that cool? You know Royal Raymond Wright is, right? William? Uh, Royal Raymond Wright. Rife, Rife, Rife. Yeah, that, well, no. I know the name. Well, he, uh, he, he does, uh, he had a generator that uh, kills diseases using sound harmonics. Right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah but... It looks pretty neat. It's cool. Because <laughs> 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 you, you can get so many different tones, you get a little... Can I try it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, um, I'm as yeah, far you as, gotta, uh, yeah. yeah, see, Ken, okay. Ken and the other guys taught me the proper technique of yeah. getting a... If I play the wrong tune, will the universe explode or something? Oh, uh, yeah, it'll all revert back on itself. Okay. Um, all right, well, let's jump yeah. to uh, voters. Let's jump to this. Okay, because... Sorry, this is a good topic, but um, as far as herbal remedies for chemtrails, um, I highly recommend the oral chelation therapy oral chelation therapy yes. what is that it's um it, it gets the heavy metals out of your brain yeah and all you gotta do is take four pills a day four pills a that's day. it and i know i can't give plugs out on the air but um let's just say the place rhymes with uh meeple's marmacy and um you can uh -huh. get it there it's really cheap it's good cool. huh. and it's it's chelation what, what would i go in and ask for just ask for the oral chelating compound that's oral it. chelating compound okay yep. Good stuff with selenium. But uh, not to, to uh, change this good subject, thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Um, but uh, there's going to be a little get-together on Thursday. Thursday. And that's going to be at Cafe Mundi at 1704 East 5th Street. And uh, it kicks off uh, at 8 o'clock, and it's going to be going until 10. 
Uh, this is just a preliminary flyer. It's we got a better. So one. now we're showing electile dysfunction, right? Yeah, like the name. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's a documentary about uh, the problems with electronic voting machines. You have um, uh, you've got cases where there's uh, tons and tons of fraud going on. We've got a one of our uh, on the back of our little flyer. We're going to have this little map, and it's basically detailing all these examples. And Travis County, Texas, right where we live and breathe. Um, pressing enter after a straight Democratic vote changes vote to Bush on <laughs> e-slate machines. Right. Just like that. There, are, There's no paper receipt showing you what you voted for. Right. So uh, well, what, uh, what the problem is is that there's, if there's any sort of discrepancy, guess what, folks? You Eat can't it. go back and count. Right. That's it. Um, uh, but so uh, we're going to have some guests. Uh, You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. He, I'll yep. be talking. We're going to have Freeman there. And have um, we gotten confirmation on Alex Jones yet? We have got confirmation with Jack Blood. Jack Blood, awesome. Yes, All right. we got Jack, Jack man, Blood. You're the man. <laughs> and our spokes lady, uh, Vicki Karp, is going to be there. This woman yeah, Vicky is, will be there. She is a hard worker. This woman's got steel for blood. Yeah. It was unreal. The, uh, we also have some uh, music directly following the uh, festivities. DJ OT23 right. is... Uh, gonna be going crazy there um i just listened to a cd on the way here it's uh it's good stuff it's i hear they're political yes yeah, slightly yeah <laughs> slightly. it's um it's like politics meets uh chemistry it's yeah, I know. yeah um but uh 8 to 10 p.m check it out the movie is uh, about you know about an hour long and uh, it's we're not we're not here to you know shock and scare people we want to empower people. We want people to know that there is a way to fix things. I don't know about the chemtrails, um, but we hey, can fix this. You know, we hear about the march going on. Yeah, they yeah. just said that. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. That's that's a big step. Big step. Uh, and now I'm excited about this uh, Thursday at Mondays. Yeah, it's at Cafe Monday. Uh, there it is again up on. Hey, all uh, right. Okay. And the uh, electile dysfunction. Who who produced that? Do you know? Uh. Is that a local production, I should say? No, that's a uh, that's a group out of the northwest. Uh, um, okay. I should have brought their names. That's right. Um, we'll put it on. But the... uh, they've got they, they've got their own little website that's uh, very informative. And uh, let's see, that's about all I know about it right now. All right. Um, I'll, I'll be kind of new to it. Also, it was kind of forced on me by my uh, superiors. Oh yeah. Here, show this. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And hopefully uh, we'll find a little extra time to look at one of uh, a couple of minutes of my video. Yeah, uh, well, kind of it's possible. Yeah. yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> good. Hey, every I'm always trying to get the info out there. Absolutely, but doesn't hurt show to the pay the electric video. Bill. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's awesome. Uh, so I will definitely be there, and Jack will definitely be there. We're going to get together at the coffee shop. We're going to watch this movie, talk about things. Uh, and explore this, uh, I mean, it, you know, if you watch my show, I've, I've got kind of a disbelief in voting and elections <laughs> as it goes, but this is getting ridiculous. I mean, this is to the point of, you know, we don't even care anymore. We're just going to take the election and, uh, yeah. Even no, no more charade anymore. You know, at least we had the facade that we were like free citizens and we got to elect a president. But personally, I don't believe that. I don't either. Um, just, just a you brought up a good point. The idea that there is, it's wide in the open. If you do a, if you if you search, uh, like the CNN website, they've got transcripts of uh, uh, Ralph Nader was uh, talking uh, in Florida immediately after the election. And uh, what's his name? Christopher Bolin asked a question about these electronic voting machines. And they took his question off of the transcript. You can't find it. Uh, it just says Christopher Bolin, question. Right. And then it shows Ralph Nader's answer. And you can read between the lines and figure out what he was asking. Right. But it's, it's in broad daylight. They cut it right off the website. That's amazing. We so live in 1984. <laughs> I, when I saw George Bush change the uh, 911 to Saddam Hussein, I was like, that's it. You know, we're at war with Eurasia. We're at war with, I don't know. Uh, Get ready. Get <laughs> we ready. Don't know, we don't know what's going on, dude. Iran, yeah. is, Iran is switching to the euro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are that's all screwed. That's going to be a big deal. And, um, but no, but no, uh, uh, Hugo Chavez is the bad guy. He gave us all that oil. You know, he's he's been helping everybody, but... 
we call him a commie. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, I know. And, you know, look what just happened with Milosevic and... and... Yeah, he just died mysteriously in jail. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. Choked so people, on a toothpick. You know, one thing you got to recognize is that we're looking at a global conspiracy here, and, and that really makes a big difference in how you view these things, because these people have absolutely no allegiance to the United States. They have no allegiance to us whatsoever. This is all a big game to them, and the end result, well, is, is quite amazing. But we're not going to get into that in this show, because, uh, well, not quite enough time. But we have uh, Dr. Michael Sala, I believe. Is that is that really a confirmed thing there, uh, Shag? Yeah. My, Dr. Michael Sala is is the host of. Yeah. All right. <laughs> host well, of Exopolitics. Uh, okay, but yeah. All right. And don't forget the hype You got it. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to have Dr. Michael Sala on here, n hopefully next week, if not the week after. And he does exopolitics, which uh, is, he, he has uh, categorized 57 different alien species. And he is showing their motives and agendas on planet Earth. Now, strangely enough, my father chased flying saucers for the government. My roommate's father chased flying saucers for the government. Shag's father chased flying saucers in Starlight. There's something going on, and there's you know, it's if, if we're the sons of these people that that chased, you know, that were involved in all these covert operations. So I'm real excited about having Dr. Sala on because he's gonna just rock the house on that topic, you know. But I was talking, I went over to my friend's house for Thanksgiving and his dad started telling me, oh yeah, we're in contact with 59 alien species right now. And, uh, you know, he <laughs> just blew it all out there just so nonchalant. But he uh, seemed to think that the chemtrail thing was, was a good thing and, and that was because he was all for fleecing the planet of a few humans. <laughs> Jeez. Well, there's a, there's a book by... Um, uh, God, what's his name? Anyway, his name of the book is uh, Behold a Pell Horse. Oh, yeah, Cooper. Yeah, yeah William Cooper. Yeah. And he, uh, he mentioned that there was a deal signed with the aliens to, um, for trade of their technology, they could abduct people. Absolutely. But later, he recanted that statement. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, and then we know what happened to William Cooper. 1954, Eisenhower meeting. Thank 19, you. 1954, 1954 Eisenhower. Yeah, Eisenhower. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. The greys are coming yep. down there. They, you know, I myself have a bona fide abduction story, and I'm pretty certain that I was abducted all my life because my father was involved, and it tends to follow lineages. If you study abductions, you'll find that they follow families. Wouldn't make sense. They want to follow the bloodline. Exactly. Now you got it. That's exactly right. So I've had this in my life all my life, and it's a, it's a big question. I'm actually going to do a show. I'm, I've been working on this one since I started on TV to uh, film a regressive therapy uh, session for myself and cool. find out what happened that night when I lost five hours of time. Okay, I need to let you all know that um, next Wednesday, uh, is that tomorrow, Shag? <laughs> He's yeah. my calendar. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to all be meeting down at the Spider House, and uh, it's going to be a great time if you guys want to come and hang out and talk with us. Uh, the metaphysical meeting, you want to put that on there? Um, next Wednesday, tomorrow, we will have... Uh, a great little talk and some coffee, and we're working on getting uh, Spider House to show us some movies. And now I've got the Cafe Monday connection, and we might show some movies there. So tomorrow night at Spider House, show up, come and talk with me, talk with everybody. There's a whole group of us, ah, you know, but we're come such a wide variety of people, you know. It's not just, uh, it's, you'd be amazed and astounded at who shows up at this group. Uh, it's about stuff that matters. It is. You can get together and talk about sports. Oh, God. Or you get together and talk about stuff that matters. I know. I'm so tired of babble. I have the worst time with babble. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm kind of babbling now. Uh, <laughs> well, um, well, Dan, I'm uh, kind of sorry that Kent didn't come on the air. Oh, you know, very exciting thing. I'm uh, going to be interviewed by Tex Mars on his radio broadcast. Oh, I'm yes. pretty excited about that. I saw him on your show last week. Was that nuts? No, that was cool. Yeah. That is that is that is a wild book. 
It is. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you start to put it together that way, when you start to look at, you know, here are these guys who practice occult rituals, you know, they've got a whole system of magic, all, all this effort goes into it, the timing, the special uh, angels that you call upon. Tonight was supposed to be about calling upon angels as opposed to uh, demons, right? I have uh, Kent Daniel Brinskowski who, uh, he, he called on Raphael and Michael. Well, what really tripped me out is I was at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and uh, I was thinking about angels while I was there. And I kind of thought about myself being an angel in other people's eyes. Because I've had these little angels drop into my world and they, you know, help me in a time of need. Well, I started looking around at who was helping me there in Tucson. And I had Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, <laughs> Ezekiel. They were all there, I swear to God. I was living with, with Gabriel in Tucson. I was uh, going to Michael for advice and all these different angel names going through. And then the people that weren't angel names were either like Splinter <laughs> or Jesta, <laughs> you know. But Jesta made me this, right? And uh, it's, nice. uh, yeah, and it's Rose Quartz, uh, Amethyst, and Pearl. That took some but, time. Yeah, he's been doing this for a long time. But if you see, it actually looks like an angel. It does. And it was all angels that, and it was it was really tripping me up in the midst of all of the my seeing my first B two bomber and uh, the he gunned helicopters and the chemtrails and then yeah. all these angels in my world is. Um, I mean, if I may, I know there's um two things I was going to say is uh, uh well first, my father and I we went we went hunting in Van Horn, and we saw Van Horn, Texas, and it's you know about 100 miles southeast of El Paso. And there was this military aircraft. It was just flying low to the ground, and he was so close we could see the pilot turn his head and look at us no as he flew by. That's so, astounding. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty that's pretty wild. Um, uh, yeah, I got to see my first B two bomber flew right over our heads. That was pretty crazy. It didn't make a sound until it was past us. Oh, oh I remember what I was going to mention though. Oh, you yes. mentioned angels, um, but uh, folks, it doesn't matter what what you believe. The fact is the people in power, what they believe will affect you. Right. And that's why it's important to know your enemy. Yeah. And and recognize that this goes beyond simple psychological conditioning. There's more to it. There's the reasons why they have specific dates, you know, there's a reason nine one one was so used, you know, that the towers were built, the Pentagon was built, the, the activity happened. Well, think about it. You just if you if before that, if you asked somebody what nine one one meant to them, they would have said the emergency, the emergency number, number or whatever. Yeah. And now it has turned into this meme that has captured everybody's fear and aggression in one little ball. All you gotta do is say nine one one, and everybody just gets real solemn and somber. Well, you know, one thing I've also noticed is if you look at all the police cars, speaking of nine one one on the police cars, notice the stars that are on the police cars. Uh, you'll see the seven pointed star of the Thelema, uh, Alistair Crowley group. Uh, and, and I was just at uh, Mardi Gras, and there they've got the pentagram with the moon, the crescent moon, you know. <laughs> Another reason the, I don't go to Mardi Gras. Yeah, well, that was on the police car, you know. And if you look at the, the stars, each of those stars on the police cars actually has a magical meaning. And they're not put there by accident. They, uh, you know, see these seven-pointed stars. That's what I'm trying to show you is that this thing runs rampant. You know, there's a reason that, that the pentagram, pentagram is on China, Russia, America, Iran, Iraq, all of them. You know, it's all on their military. Uh, Generals, they get stars when they get promoted. Exactly. Well, we're down to our last 20 seconds. So. Thank you so James, much for having me on. Thanks for coming by, yeah. Um, and, uh, Cafe Monday. Cafe Monday, Thursday. Uh, the Cafe Spider House tomorrow. It's going to be a coffee time. So Spider House tomorrow, Cafe Monday, Thursday, South by Southwest all weekend. Keep your eye on the trails. Yeah. Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Got you off quick. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having me on. That's great. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you had some time, I'd go ahead and tell you what the... Uh, plan of events is. Alright, well I need to pee and, yeah. and smoke. I'll smoke with you. Alright. And then I'll come back and clean all this stuff. There's actually dying. Some movies all over there. <laughs> Just leave it there. <laughs> no crank call. I know. Yeah.